guys, this is Matt Full Tilt Bullies. Hope y'all are having a good night. Tonight's video is about Miss Boss Lady. She is somewhere around 58 and 62 days pregnant. Um, I know it's probably hard to see her too on this couch, but uh, I wanted to get y'all a few tips that are really important when you are a breeder. Um, and some of this stuff you, you have to learn by trial and error or doing, but if I can help somebody to get a few of these things before they have to mess up, uh, I, I really hope that I achieve that goal and can help some of y'all out. Uh, so we're just going to jump right in here. Um, you're going to want to, leading up to the pregnancy and, and really just your dogs in general, you want to keep your, your pregnant female exercised. Uh, you know, when they when they go into labor and they're having these puppies, you don't want to have them really short short of wind and just having a really hard time pushing these puppies out. Uh, it's really exhausting. Uh, it takes a toll on them, and this can last for hours. So you want to make sure that they're in good shape. Uh, you don't want them just laying around, you know, 24-7 waiting to have puppies. Uh, so you can, like I said, you can let them run, let them play up until a certain point, and then you want to separate them and, you know, take them on walks and, uh, you know, just kind of play like a little tug of war with them. Just, you know, gently keep them in shape where they're doing a little bit of strength and conditioning to, to stay healthy for the upcoming um, task that's, that's coming up. And, and it's a, a pretty good ordeal. Pushing all these puppies out, I'm telling you, it really takes them down. So... Make sure you keep your dog in good shape and exercise. Now, also, of course, you're going to increase their food intake. Uh, you want to make sure they're eating. Keep a good uh, bowl. Like her bowl here, I just fed her. She's still got food left over. And I try to keep food and water put in here. Now, the water uh, really comes in into major effect, which they need water anyway. But water really becomes a major issue closer to um, labor and during labor. They're, they need plenty of water to drink. Uh, they'll be eating up after birth and stuff. Um, and just, you know, them them going through so much, they get dehydrated, use the bathroom, certain things. So you want to keep plenty, plenty of water uh, available for them at all times. Uh, two weeks before she actually goes into labor, you know, obviously you should know about the date like my date with her is between the first and the fifth now we're coming up really close on our our due date I, I honestly i believe within the next day or two she should be dropping her litter uh, and i want to say she's probably got at least eight in there uh for some of y'all guys that are less experienced now you're going to want to take your female and really the people that are experienced honestly need to go and get an x-ray done at day 45 get a puppy count so you know when she's fully done or if there's an issue uh, you know you need to have all that on hand uh, also you need to make sure you keep a little money put back because a emergency c-section costs a pretty good bit uh, around here it costs fifteen hundred dollars I've, I've had to do it um, twice now we've been involved not with me personally but with people that I've you know bred with etc so you really need to make sure you have some money put back for in case that happens. Um, now, the next part right here, in my opinion, is... Oh, oh, let me jump back real quick. The two weeks thing. You need to bring them two weeks out from actual labor. You need to bring them in, have their whelping box set up. If they're in the house and you don't have a whelping area set up, you go ahead and get that set up two weeks before your due date. They need to have time to nest, to be secure where they're going to have their puppies, be familiar where they're going to have their puppies, and be able to, you know, throw some newspapers in there, um, some blankets, towels, so they can scrouch it around and put it in the corner. They do all kind of crazy stuff, but that's just them nesting. It's a natural instinct that they do. So... Uh, remember that two weeks out, they definitely, you can even go before that three or four if you know she took for sure, but you know, like I said, two weeks. Um, now, this right here is a really important part. Um, you're going to want to keep her undercarriage really clean, nipples and everything needs to be really took care of and, and to make sure that she don't 
uh, develop mastitis and little things you that you know you want to really make sure that there's no dirt and dead skin and all that just make sure they're clean some people shave them and and clean them but you do not want to squeeze the nipples I know I know a lot of people that will kind of try to do a pregnancy tests by seeing if they have milk in them and stuff this is a, a mistake you do not want to squeeze on her nipples and get the milk uh, started you know you don't want to get it get it producing milk um, way before she's ready to have puppies now once she's had like say she's in labor you can massage them and get milk to come out because that will kind of speed up the the labor process and induce her a little bit but before she has her puppies a couple weeks out or however long it is you do not want to do that because she can develop mastitis and the, the milk will start you know coming in and it'll swell up and it'll get hard and it's just uncomfortable for her it's dangerous for her if she gets mastitis it can be really it can kill her and the whole litter so you want to you know be really careful don't overdo it don't don't get too ahead of yourself and impatient just let it the process do what it does uh, and I'm guilty of this I've done it before um, you know, like, well, I wonder if she has a little milk in there. That'll tell me she's pregnant. But like I said, it'll bite you in your butt every time. So, um, you can shave them, keep them clean with a little, you know, get you some baby wipes and clean them off. And, uh, I put a little bit of Utter Balm on hers, not a whole lot, but just enough to kind of keep them from being so dry and, and starting to hurt, you know, they get chapped, especially it's cold outside also. Um, but you know when they get to hanging a little bit they'll go outside and use the bathroom they'll drag the ground maybe get in their pee a little bit um, you know just depends on on the situation so you're going to want to clean them as they come in from outside and different things um, now once you get close to labor and you're like right on the day that you know she's supposed to go in or the day after you can do certain things like walk them um, massage their nipples, massage their stomachs, their ab uh, abdomen area, and that will sometimes kind of put her into labor. You're going to want to look for uh, her to drop her mucus plug, and you want to keep keep a check on her temperature. I start doing a temperature check like a week out, uh, you know, and I, I won't do it every day a week out, but I'll do it when I know she's about a week from having her puppies, I'll go ahead and take one just to kind of see where we're at. And then a day or two later, I'll take it again. And then I'll start getting like one and two and three times a day. We'll keep checking on the temperature. Because once that temperature drops at 99 and 98, you're pretty much within like a 12 to 24 hour period that she's going to have her puppies. Um, <clears throat> she's probably going to be somewhere around 101, 102. Um, her temperature and I have noticed with mine I usually get a spike then a drop so it'll go up like 103 104 then it'll drop down to 99 98 and then we have some puppies coming so next thing on here is when you do get to the labor point she's going to probably start panting she's going to get a dazed look in her eyes like I said her temperature is going to drop um, and she'll, she'll just kind of be off a little bit. You're going to want to make sure that she can't get in nowhere and hide, like get off in a closet somewhere. Like with my, my place here, if she goes out back, I don't want her to get up under the building. Little, little things like that you want to make sure that she can't do because that's also a, a, a big sign. When they start looking for little places to burrow and cubby into or they sneak off and they're trying to hide, that's just their natural instinct to get somewhere safe and quiet so they can have their puppies. Uh, and that's another thing also, you wanna make sure that, that, that everybody's not in the house yelling. And you know, what we usually do is we make sure everybody knows, hey, you stay quiet, stay calm. We sometimes will even send them to their uh, grandmother's house, the kids, and we don't have nobody over, different things. So, and I'll hit on a few of those topics in, in the next video. But like I said, these are just a few things to, to kind of look for and to do. Um, so that you can have the most successful um, birthing process and a good pregnancy and you want to watch for any abnormalities and just kind of take very good care of her. Um, get, get to know them really well that way you can actually go in there with, with them 
Um, you know, I've had her since she was a puppy, so she could have the puppies out here in the middle of the floor and be fine with us. Um, but, you know, some people don't have that good of a bond with their dogs. And when that's the case, you need to really build that bond up so that when the puppies are coming, she's not growling and trying to bite you. And you don't want to make her nervous. You don't want to make her uncomfortable and stressed out. It's just going to slow it down. It will stop having puppies like that. Um, I've seen it. I mean, I have actually seen it happen. They will, they start getting nervous and they're worried about their puppies. They'll just quit having them on you. So you don't want to do that. Give them space and, and, and let them do their thing. Um, but like I said, so that you can get in there with them and make sure everything's all right. So uh, that's going to be all for tonight. I, like I said, I got a lot more stuff as far as the actual labor process goes that I want to hit on and try to get in. And I may do a voiceover video um, just so it don't bother her too much so that we're just um, recording instead of actually talking and trying to do all this stuff. Uh, so I'm, I'm hopefully I can get y'all some good footage on... Um, you know, just when puppies are being delivered and different things, uh, we'll try to get to you. So, I appreciate y'all a ton. Uh, we're coming up on like 8,000 subscribers, um, and it's really just amazing. I really appreciate all, all of y'all that are uh, positively supporting what I'm doing. Uh, it really means a whole lot to me. So, thank y'all. Keep on being great, and I will catch y'all next time.